All right, so last night, Mistral released a new model, a new interface, in fact, where it's a 123 billion parameters model and it's called LayChat, right? So it's flash answers at which runs at a 1100 tokens per second, which is extremely fast, right? 10 times faster than any of the majorly available models out there, right? So in this video, what I want to do is try this out a bit. It's a relatively small model compared to Deep Sea Carbon, for example. So you cannot just exactly compare performance but what's impressive over here is the speed of the model which is like an order of magnitude faster right so let me just set up an account first and you can find this on chat.mistral.ai and over here this is an interface again like a lot of things which are pretty much similar in a lot of these AI interfaces but in Mistral you have these tools which are enabled or disabled by default right so you can enable all these tools and they will get automatically enabled you can also attach PDFs or images and it also says that you can mention an agent right so there is a concept of agents as well but before getting into any of that let me just disable web search let me just disable image generation i need canvas and code interpreter and now i want to ask something let's say i ask the same thing which we did in one of the videos that is create me a basic tic tac toe game where i can also define difficulties easy medium hard and play with cpu fairly straightforward prompt i'm leaving up to it what technologies it wants to use whether it's react or any other thing but you can see how, how fast it did the whole thing right so it used python in this specific example i can ask it can you create a react js app for me and if i ask at this and hit enter so you can see it's extremely fast right so it just gives you the whole message like you're making an api call and getting the full response what i'm more interested in however is how to trigger this canvas okay so i just literally asked it that can you use canvas tool and it just shifted the whole thing on canvas which is awesome right so over here you can see the easy mode is easy let me just try out the hard mode ones so let's see and Oh, <laughs> I lost on a <laughs> on a real video. So hard mode is indeed hard, so it's thinking. And as you know, in hard mode, the best you can do is just make it a draw, right? In case, you know, both the players are playing good. But in this case, for example, the draw is not working, right? So I can just ask it. I cannot see draw notification when the match draws. So just instantly change it so fast that it doesn't even make sense to stream the response. You can just, you know, just wait for a second and just write the full response directly. So now if we try at hard mode, I don't even know what it changed. I saw for a split second, there was like a delta line that showed like this has been changed and this has been made available, but I don't know what happened. So let's see now. Okay, now you can see it's a draw. You can ask it to do more things. For example, make the background a bit more happening, disco lights maybe as I play, and sound effects on clicking on every turn. So you can see now it's started to get a bit slow, right? So suddenly now it's slow and it's matching the speed of GPTs and all. So you can see the reason for this is because as you have more context over above, it needs more time to think as a model, right? Again, I don't know the science behind it, but it seems legit that the more you have talked already, the more it has to ingest as context, the slower the model becomes in its response, which is what's happening over here, right? So now you can see Mr is back to I think a few hundred tokens per second all right so now it has created a file but it doesn't has this so if I can go ahead and comment this out this still works but again no disco light effects and I believe there are no sound effects also because I can't hear anything so anyway so you get the idea so in general like this whole AI space is growing up so fast I just want to take a quick minute to let you guys also know how I plan to use these tools and how you should be using these tools in general so if we take out a little list right now we have a lot of things available today we have open AI of Obviously, chat GPT. We have Bolt.new from StackBlitz. We have v0.dev from Vercel. We have, let's say, this LayChat interface now from Mistral. We obviously have DeepSeek, DeepSeek R1 from DeepSeek. We have Gemini models from Google. I'm writing all of these which are consumer focused, right? Now, there are a few models on Azure AI Foundry also, which are like, you know, if you don't have an Azure account, you would not be able to use it. So I'm not writing those things. But right out of my 
thought process there is also lovable.dev which is also a nice site there uh, let me think so you can probably name a few more right some of them or mostly like all of them except for gemini deepseek openai and mistral except these four anything which you would probably find is a wrapper so there is also meta.ai from facebook this is also pretty neat if you want to try this out so a lot of these things are foundational models but a lot of others are also wrappers right and then of course you have tooling on top of that so you have windsurf you have cursor you have 100 different things you can do now with ai so a lot of these things are existing now in the market and this will continue to keep on increasing right so what you have to do as a person as a developer as somebody who's learning is probably pick the best ones in the market and at the moment i would say that's deep seek r1 and open ai if you can afford to pay for them pay for them right so if you can afford to pay for chat gpt pro do that if you can do it for chat gpt plus i forget like which one is 20 dollar and 200 dollar so i'm talking about the 20 dollar one if you can pay for 200 dollar also that's great you will unlock a lot of more state of the art ai deep seek r1 is free to use but it's like so popular now so it's mostly down gemini google released a bunch of new models a couple of days back so that's there and a lot of these websites do provide you i forgot i almost forgot you have the big thing right you have anthropic which brings in claude so anthropic is also foundational model creates a foundational model so a lot of these things what you have to do is try to keep using these tools you can change the tools because the interfaces are pretty much the same across every tool now there is a chat interface there are things you can select you know files you can upload so whatever works procedure you have the work pipeline you have that can be taken and put into any other tool what you have to realize is that all of these tools at a fundamental level work the best when you prompt them good that means that when you are able to break the problem yourself 50 percent of your work is already done right if you are explicitly clear i need this i need this i have to do this this should work like this this is like you just write a spec basically a spec of what you need to do or what you need to learn today i want to learn html css these are the things which are i don't know and this they don't have to be specific you can just be like i don't know how to create responsive websites or i don't know what everything is except for these five topics so you can also like play in a negation way where you can tell it i know these things tell me everything else which exists outside of these topics right so that's how i will approach this wave of ai in general for education and for building stuff in general is that get really good at prompting which is like how do you break down a specific problem or a specific thing which you want to ask this ai the clearer you are the clearer your prompt is the easier you can align these models to answer it in the best way right that's the only thing i have found that works great and the good test of a good model is that on the same prompt that i gave deep seek r1 like the one which i discussed in the deep seek r1 launch video also the same prompt i gave to all the other models no one was able to solve it but deep seek r1 was able to solve it it was the first model that was able to do that that's why i'm so impressed with this so yeah that's what i'll say that you try to use these models interchangeably see what fits what sticks because everything is so new right now we don't know what will be available in the next year five years ten years all you can do is just just increase your ability to comprehend a problem and break it down properly right this lay chat from mr ai is impressive because of its speed but again like i said speed and these metrics and all of that don't really matter much what really matters as at the very core is how good the model is at reasoning and thinking in general and secondly how good are you at prompting it right so that's that's where the real money is and real benefits are that's all that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you learned something new from this if you did make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel i will see you in the next video very soon